take it. Don't take this moment for granted. Don't take this moment for granted. Some people woke up this morning and weren't able to make it to, to 10 o'clock. Some people laid down last night and didn't get up this morning. Don't take this morning for granted. Some people started on Monday with us, but they didn't make Tuesday. Don't take this moment for granted. We didn't deserve to be here, but God gave us another chance. And he gave us another chance to raise our hands and do our best to thank him for who he is. And I just thank him for, for what God has already done. He is. He is the amazing. He is the anointing. He is the awesome God. And there is not like him. Not even one. There is not even one like him. There is no one who compares to him. If you search the world over, the songwriter said, there is none like him. He said he went up to the highest mountain. There is no one like him. He went down to the valley. There is none like him. The psalmist says in 139, he said, if you go down to the depths of hell, behold, God is there. If you rise to the to the heights of heaven. All right. If you look around, God is there. Okay. If you had to catch the wings of an eagle, the God that I know, he's right there. There is no God like our God. He is an omnipotent God. He's all powerful. He's omniscient God. He sees all that he knows all. He's a sovereign God. He does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, to whom he chooses to do it, any way he chooses to do it, because he's God. And he is an omnipresent God. He's all places at the same time. Everywhere he goes, he bumps into himself because he is God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, God, for reminding us that that we all praise him. And we all thank him for who he is and what he has already done. Yeah. Hallelujah to the Lord. We call your attention to Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 7. In the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs, the chapter 16, the verses number 7. Proverbs chapter 16. Verse number seven. Proverbs chapter 16. Verse number seven. We serve the awesome God. And we've come to lift him up today. Proverbs chapter 16, verse number seven. When you found it, you will discover these words. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. Amen. I want to talk about when God is satisfied. All right. All right. When God okay. is satisfied. That's all right. Make him let him use I won't forget working at Oxychem Chemical Plant. Every six months, they would have a review, and then they would have an annual review of how well you've done. And I, I had already heard it through the grapevine that I was going to have a negative evaluation. Every well. I already heard that even though I was always before time, you see, there's a difference in being in time and on time. Mm -hmm. When you in time, you're walking in the door. Mm -hmm. When you're on time, rather, you're walking in the door. When you're in time, you're already sitting in your seat. Mm -hmm. So I already knew I had a reputation of being there 20 to 45 minutes before my change and shift. Mm -hmm. So I knew they couldn't get me for being late. I already knew that I, I had not penciled in none of my numbers as I made my rounds, so I knew they couldn't get me for falsifying documentation. Right, right. But the grapevine said that I wasn't going to get a proper evaluation 
because my skin was my sin. Mm -hmm. well, All right. I I well and I already agreed with the possibility, and I had accepted that I wouldn't want to get a positive evaluation because I had this habit of speaking up and speaking out when I didn't think it was right. All right. You see, sometimes, sometimes you will fall in the, under the supervision of a supervisor that want to do it his way, uh -huh. and he will make you take chances of blowing up the whole plant for the sake of looking good. Okay. All right. Well, my goal was to make it back home safely. Yes, sir. And so I wasn't going to just mix any little thing just because they told me to mix it. All right. We have evidence this week the wrong thing caused the wrong accident. All right. I'd already been involved in, in, in two fires, and, and then after that, I was involved in an explosion. And let me just share with you, I don't like doing that. I understand. I, understand. I don't like being there. Yeah. So I already accepted the fact that I was going to get a negative evaluation, known something about, about the thing called insubordination. It is because I just couldn't accept in it and every little thing. Oh, that's right. But right. God has a way of blessing you and turning things around. That's right. Yes, he does. When you stand for what's right. Show your right. On his account. Say that, say that, say that. I made my way that night. That night, you see, when you're on night shift, they evaluate you on night shift. Around 2 a.m. in the morning, some of y'all were snowing and calling the halls. Around 2 a.m. in the morning, after I had worked from 5.30 to 2 a.m. and wasn't going to get off to 5.30 the next day, I got called in to have my negative evaluation. All right. I told God, God, give me favor. That's all I need, God, favor. Do what you want to do. Act the way you want to act. Say what you want to say, but I'm taking God in the room with me, and I'm asking God for faith. Yes, sir. So as I was trained to do, when I walk in the room, I said, good morning, sir, at 2 a.m. in the morning. I asked him how he was doing, and that broke the whole ice of professionalism. You see, young people, when you act like you got sense, it will break the ice that you don't know that is even breaking. All right. I walked in the room. I said, good morning, sir. How are you doing? And it's always the right thing to do. So I said, good morning. And the moment I sit down, I realized that my interviewer, my supervisor, had his head down. He began to share with me. He said, this is the day 15 years ago that I lost my son. He died of some disease, and, and I've been holding God accountable for the last 15 years. He said to me that I got to do your evaluation, and it doesn't look good, but I, I just have to have my own little moment here. And I just did what God has called me to do. I saw a man in need. I saw a man who needed Jesus. Now I'm there to get my negative evaluation, and I'm all right with that because I knew that I had done what they called was wrong, and I didn't deserve 100%. So as he sat there with his head down, he reminded me 15 years ago, my little boy would die, had died, and he would have been 30 today. And I know I grew up in a Christian home, but I've been holding God responsible for it all of these years. And then I went in. Mm -hmm. All right. I said, you do know that God is still God. Right. You do understand that God is the sovereign God. And God does whatever he chooses to do with whom he chooses to do it. And you do realize that your child was really his child before he was your child. And, and I just want to know one thing, brother supervisor. Have you ever received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? I said to him, the devil wants you to be miserable every time this year. Every year this time, the devil wants you to have your head down. The devil wants you to beat up on God. The devil wants you to pull away from God because of what has happened in your life. All right. Yeah. 
But let me just share with you, brother supervisor. God is yet God. Yeah. And God yet sits on the throne. And, and God is still making a way out of no way. But you can't let the devil have his way in your life. And you say you grew up in a Bryson home. My question to you is, are you a Bryson? Yeah. Yeah. He said, well, you know, I went to Sunday school. My question is, are you a Bryson? Uh -huh. Well, I went to church almost every Sunday. My question is, are you a Bryson? Yeah. Well, you know, we grew up and I sung in the choir. My question is, are you a Bryson? Uh -huh. uh -huh. So, well, you know, there was a moment where I got baptized. My question is, if baptism, which I know it hasn't saved you, are you a Christian? Have you really ever confessed in your heart, believed and believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and out of obedience unto God he gave his life as a ransom for you and me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we are in a negative evaluation moment. <laughs> we, we are in a moment where I, I'm supposed to walk out of there with an X on my paper. I'm supposed to walk out there with less than 70% on my paper and I began to share Jesus with them. I told him that it was over 2,000 years ago yes, Lord. that Jesus knew that this moment would take place. Yes, he did. I told him that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus was given by God and God gave his only begotten son. Uh -huh. Over 2,000 years yeah, ago, yeah, brother yeah, supervisor, yeah. don't you know hey. that Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary hey. and he died for you and your son and mine? Say that, say it, say it. And to say, well, you know, uh, they used to say that in church, but I've never ever trusted it enough to invite him into my life. I said, well, you know, it's about 2.15 now. This interview should have been over in 10 minutes, but we still talking about Jesus. You haven't opened the interview up, so let's keep talking about Jesus. You can be saved right here, right now, in this room. The choir doesn't have to sing. You don't have to be at a church. But you can be saved right here, right now. All you have to do is bow your head, brother supervisor, right here in this room, and confess Jesus as Lord. Invite him into your life. And you can be born again. And you don't have to live under this dark cloud any longer. That day. Come on, Doc. With my skin being my sin. All right. <laughs> with my heart and my mouth messing me up. He bowed his head about 2.30 a.m. that morning. Received Jesus Christ in his life as his personal Lord and Savior. And all of a sudden, I see him picking up the pen and, and scratching this out and, and marking this out and Xing that out. And that what should have been a 60 when I walked out of there, it began to look more like a 95. And I thank God that when a man prays, please the Lord, he will make even his enemies his enemies. I just stopped by on my way to the rapture this morning to let you know that when your ways please the Lord, He will even make your enemies change your way. He will make even your enemies bow down and worship your God. When we look at the text, the wise writer, the wise writer is writing here and, and he's saying to us in, in verse number four of, of Proverbs 16, he says to us, Commit your work unto the Lord. And when, when you commit it unto the Lord, your thoughts will be established. If you commit your ways, commit your work unto the Lord, God will bring it to pass. Because there are some things that you're hoping for, I hope. There are some things that you have goals for, I hope. There are some things that you're looking to do, I hope, that you can't do it in your own strength. You need the Lord to do it for you. You see, when we teach young people to dream, we ought to teach them to dream the biggest dreams. Mm -hmm. We ought to teach them to dream of stuff that they can't accomplish on their own. Mm -hmm. We ought to teach them to dream of living somewhere other than where they grew up. Mm -hmm. ought to teach them to dream of driving something that they've been riding mm -hmm. in. We ought to teach them to dream on having things that they never thought they would have. Right. Yes, Lord. We have to teach young people to dream of a great tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Right. This month we celebrate Dr. King's birthday, a legacy, one of the greatest men to ever live, especially in the United States of America, mm -hmm. and he taught us to dream. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just say to you, the dream should not have stopped in the 60s. All right. The dream yeah. ought to continue to live. Right. Some say that Dr. King dreamed 
and President Obama became the dream. I beg to differ because he's still dreaming and we ought to still be making history. All right. We have to teach young people that there is more to Houston, Third Ward, more to Fifth Ward and Sunnyside to see. There are some places that you can go that you never imagined, but you have to dream. Little girl, stop being so down on yourself. Forget if you're the right size or you have the right look or you, you carry yourself the right way. Get with the Lord and watch God do some great things with you. Oprah Winfrey, as a 10-year-old little girl, was, was rough on the eyes. You get there for action mama when you get home. She wasn't shaped like she's shaped now. She wasn't a Coca-Cola bottle. Her skin was darker than the folk in her neighborhood. But a white woman came through one day and said, you are just a pretty little girl. And she will testify today that right there in Cardiesco, Mississippi, she dreamed of being more than what she was. Yeah, yeah. Young people have to dream of being more than what they were born in. Yeah. They have to dream of being more than what they were established in. They have to dream of going farther than what they have accomplished already. But they can't do that if they keep looking back and looking at what they were born in. Come on, Doc. Robert Jordan, young girl, born in third war, worked in fifth war, and ended up at the nation's capital. You have to understand that we can make things better than what they are. Our communities ought to be better. Our children ought to act better. We have to invest in them and tell them that they can be better than what they are. And make sure you understand that it's not about money. It's about your ways pleasing the Lord. My daddy was a sharecropper. That means that we could never break even. Some people said they were born in the country, but, but we were reared on a plantation. My wife like to talk about we grew up country. I said, no, y'all didn't. We grew up on a plantation. Y'all right, just grew up where dirt and trees were. Yeah, we grew yeah. up on a plantation. All right. Where the house we lived in didn't belong to us. Uh -huh. where, where the money daddy made didn't belong to him. Yeah. And where we lived was so far off the road, we have to run a quarter of a mile in order to get to the bus stop in the morning. And regardless of how much he made, it was a, it was a hard pressed situation just to break even at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. But when Daddy died, he left some things and he left a legacy. What I'm saying to you, and he left some money. What I'm saying to you is, it doesn't matter how much you make. Your ways are to please the Lord. Give God His ten percent, and He can multiply whatever you have. So you're right. The text says, the wise writer said, commit your thoughts to the Lord. Commit your, your desires. Commit your works unto the Lord, and he will establish it. That's right. That's right. God can do more with what you have than you can do with what you have. God has proven it over and over again that, that he can bless you to be all that you want to be if you just get, commit your ways unto him. Yeah. Yeah. Says, Commit your works to him. And whenever a man's ways please God, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. All right. That day some years ago at 2.30 in the morning, my enemy was at peace with me. All right. My enemy, because see, when you get a bad review, you can't even transport to a new department. <laughs> when you get a bad review, you, you, you can't even get a pay increase. When you get a bad review, you can't even become a supervisor. When you get a bad review, you see your enemies will always try to hold you down and hold you back. Dr. King says that you can't keep a good man down without getting in the mud with him. Don't you understand that you can keep rising and rising again if you just commit your ways unto the Lord? Whatever meetings you go through. Oh, you're right. When you're in a board meeting and 
and other folk is getting ready to eat. You ought to commit your ways to the Lord. Yeah. Bow yeah. your head in this room oh, that's right. yeah. and thank the Lord for the food yeah. before you eat it right in the presence of those with suit and ties on. Yeah. Right in the presence of millionaires. Yeah. Because when you do what's right to do, then God has a way of blessing you right in the presence of millionaires. Yeah. Yeah. Bow your head. When I say bow your head, I ain't talking about All of a sudden, when it's time to pray on your food, you get fidgety, making folk think you rubbing on your head and, and looking down on the floor and, and acting like you. You ought to proudly honor your God when you go out somewhere. You ought to proudly praise him for what he's done for you. The man's ways please the Lord. When it talks about a man, it's talking about human beings. It's talking about male and female. It's talking about men, women, boys, and girls. Whenever a man, woman, boy, a girl's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies behave yeah, yeah. and be at peace with him. So you're right. Now, I didn't know what God was going to do that night. And I really didn't care what God is going to do because when you walk with God, you don't tell God how to handle God's business. That's right, right. And when you get to a point where you're able to admit, God, I don't know what's going on. God, I don't know what's going to happen. You just on your way to the interview. You tell God, God, this is what they got on me. And God, this is how I'm going to handle it. No, you don't tell God how to handle it. You say, God, they got this on me. God, I can't get a pay increase. God, I can't get a, a supervisor position. God, I can't transfer to a new, new department. Now, God, I ask you for favor. And when God shows up, he shows up in a way that you will never you don't have to fight. You don't have to stand on the table. You don't have to cuss them out and get fired. The objective is to keep the money flowing that you got flowing. The objective is to keep the blessings flowing that you have flowing. Oh, yeah. There's a very cool video out there. It's very cool where this guy was, was uh, uh, an employee of a coffee shop and he decided to quit one day. And I advise you not to handle your job like this. But it was really cool. It was really neat. I advise you, don't count on yours. He, he was getting ready to, to leave, and that was his last day. And evidently, he had not given a two weeks notice. I advise you to give a two weeks notice. Because you may get paid for those two weeks. He didn't give a two weeks notice. So the, the, the coffee shop was filled with customers. People in the window looking from the outside through the window. And he said he called his supervisor's name and his manager's name and said, hey, hey. He called them and hey, Joe, hey, Bob, I just want to let you know something. I got a message for you. Now, everybody in the coffee shop is looking. He said, I, I brought my friends here to help me to get my message across. So the brother started walking, walking. And he said, I am quitting this job today. Hey, hey, hey. I'm leaving. I mean, it was cool. I mean, it looks good. But don't quit your job like that. <laughs> and they sung a song in front of all of the customers, in front of all the people walking down the street. And he quit his job today because he was going to open up his own coffee shop. Let me just share with you. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes his enemies behave. We don't have to come up with gimmicks and gadgets. We just have to walk in the Lord. When a man's ways please the Lord, his ways is presented before men, and God is able to bless you real good. This word ways means your, your mode of action. Word ways means your custom, how you handle yourself. Yeah. The word ways means your conversation and how you carry yourself. We have to teach our young girls and young boys how to put together a two-line sentence. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. And we have to teach them how to dress before interviews. Mm -hmm. Don't say, don't say, don't, don't say they, they're discriminating on you when you haven't done your homework. You ought to know the company when you walk in. There's no excuse to, for not knowing what the company does, who the supervisor is, and whatever you do when you walk in the company, get to know the receptionist and the janitor. Yeah. Yeah. Because the receptionist knows everything. Mm -hmm. 
And the janitor sees everything. All right. And when the janitor's up there late in the evening, he's sweeping the floor and vacuum. He looks over on the desk to the CEO and he reads the paper. And just so happened, he read your name the night before that you were coming in for an interview. So when you walk in, give the janitor a fist bump and say, man, how you doing? Simply because that janitor's going to make a difference when you get hired. All right. It's a problem when your ways mistreat other folks. It's a problem when you, you dog out other folk because of their position or because you think that, that they can't help you. Yes, sir. But what you have to understand, God will raise up somebody yeah. just to be a blessing to you. Yeah. And when he raises up somebody just to be a blessing to you, you need to understand this, that God will raise them up and you won't even know where they're coming from. Yeah. You just make sure your ways, yeah. your mode of action. Your direction, your conversation, your mannerism ought to please the Lord. Right. And your course ought to please him. Yeah. You ought to be wondering at night, how, Lord, can I better please you? How can I be a better person to glorify your name? Yeah. How, Lord, what can I do to make a difference? Because, Lord, I know other folk are watching me, and I've told people I'm Christ. People know I go to church. But if you roll over and they hit there at you, hey, hit this too, man, something wrong with that. When you roll up and they don't think anything about your presence and they just keep stealing like they were stealing, something wrong with that. When you roll up and they cussing like seaport sailors and they don't even acknowledge you, there's something wrong with that. Your character ought to set a light in the dark room. Your character, when you walk in, they, they ought to say, here's Miss Goody Toots you. Now, they don't mean to compliment you. What they're really doing is down-talking you. But regardless of what they say, they got to admit that you got your character in check. All right. If they see you still in pen and pencil, oh, it's just a pen and a pencil. They won't miss it. But when you walk in with character, when you carry yourself as if you know the Lord, as if you love the Lord, your enemies will call on you when things go bad for them. Right. Yes, sir. Right. You want to be able to carry yourself where people will look to you when they go through hard times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be like the brother. The brother in the line doing Hurricane Ike. We all standing in the line. He's standing there bragging about, man, I ain't supposed to be in this line. I'm looking at him like, oh, really? Get out of the way and let me get in front of you then. <laughs> and then he went on to say, I don't suppose to be in this line. I make fifty thousand dollars a year. Really? I wanted to tell the brother I made fifty thousand twenty years ago, <laughs> and you in the line bragging about making fifty thousand. But my next thought to him, and I said to him, I said, brother, it doesn't matter what we make. It doesn't matter how much we used to make. Right now, no jobs are open. Right now, your fifty thousand can't buy you ice, and it can't buy you water. So we all in the same line together. So don't get arrogant because God has blessed you with a little stuff. Because if you don't wake up in the morning, you won't have your stuff. And not only that, in case you wake up in the morning, the stuff is not guaranteed to you. That's right. That's right. So watch your character. Watch how you carry yourself. Watch how you treat people. When your when your ways please the Lord, He will make your enemies. Your footstool. He will make your enemies behave. He will make the devil stay away because your ways please him. Yes, sir. And when you pray, when your ways please him, you ought to pray in faith. The Bible says, Hebrew says it like this, it's impossible to please God without faith. You have to have faith. Now, you can tell folks that got faith. When you got faith, you, you know God's going to help you. You don't fall to pieces when something goes wrong. All right. You just right. say, well, God, this is what's going on. Lord, I'm depending on you. Yeah. Lord, I'm asking you to bring it through. Lord, I know, I know it's not what I want. Lord, I know it's not what I'm what I would like to go through. Now, Lord, I'm asking you to fix it as only you can. Yeah. And remember, God is not our bell hops. Yeah. But we go say, God fetch this and God do this and God handle this. We ought to have a relationship with God where God knows who we are when we call on. Because we have a relationship with him in such a way that we fellowship with him every day, all day. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
With things that's going right, thank you, God. With things that's going bad, Lord, I need you now. Lord, where are you? There have been times when things were going so bad that I looked up at God and said, God, where are you? During the 2016 election, I was like, God, really? God, you sure got a sense of humor. During today, I said, God, God, you know how to call America to her feet and bow down on their knees. This is a moment in America where we need to stand for God and need to bow down and trust God. Amen. It is impossible to please God without faith. We need to have faith that God sees it. We walk around here upset like God is high. Like God is blind. God doesn't see it. Let me tell you, God sees everything. God knows everything. He knew it before it took place. Somebody lied to us and said, oh, President Obama is a great black hope. Well, we have to understand that he has the president, the whole nation, not just us. Yeah. Amen. And then, and then in the same breath, they would say, oh, President Obama is the, the Antichrist. Yeah. Let me tell you, we call him the Antichrist now than we ever been. Yeah. Because the Antichrist is bold. He, he, he stands, and then he influenced other folk to be bold. You know, they don't wear hoods anymore. They come out boldly with their stuff now. Because the Antichrist has a way of emboldening people. We are in these last days, and young people, whatever you do, don't depend on social media to give you life. You need to depend on God to give you whatever you need. Children are so upset because they don't get enough likes. Because they don't get enough shares. Children are, are, have low self-esteem because, because people don't comment on their page. Let me tell you, God is your God. And you don't have to be old to honor him as God. You need to walk with him as God. Stay with him as God. Through these turbulent times, God is still going to be God. Yes, he is. So, so when right. people come to me talk about what's going on, I say, well, there's one thing I know for sure. God is yet on the throne. Yeah. The earth is his footstool, yeah. and he's still awake, and he's making changes behind the scenes. So, you're right. so don't worry about where you're going and where you've been. God is setting it up behind the scenes. Yeah. You need to just stay in favor with God, because when you're in favor with God, you will always come up on time. Yes, you show you right. Joseph Brothers threw him in a pit, killed him. They thought, left him to die. Mm -hmm. Potiphar's wife accused him of sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. Then he became the second man in charge. Yeah, yeah. When God gives you favor, yeah. no man can take it away from you. Right. When God positions himself, he knows how to position you. Yeah. And God has a way of blessing you even when things just not looking right. No, you're right. The, the, text, the text says that when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. Yes, sir. This word enemy is for. For a, a, those who are against godliness hate us. Anybody got any haters in the room? Can you just think of just one hater? Just, just, just one person that did that doesn't think you deserve what you have. You know, don't measure yourself against other people. Measure yourself against Jesus because you can always measure yourself against other people and you can always look good. But when you measure yourself against Jesus, you will always be striving to become more. You have to strive to become more. You have to lean to become more. You have to trust in Jesus to become more. Right. Educations are good. Mm -hmm. But your education can't keep you. That's right. Let me tell you, money answers all things. The Bible says money answers all things. All right. But money can't keep you. All right. I know plenty of people with a whole lot of money. No, you're right. But God has not kept their minds. Right. And their money is not. It won't even give them a, nice, a good night's sleep. Money won't even give you 
a, a, a thing of bread. Money won't even allow you to pick up your own fork and feed your own self. You can't depend on money. That's why I'm so, so, so amazed how people refuse to give God his 10% and more because they're money hungry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But when a man's ways please the Lord, yeah, yeah. So you're right. he makes even his enemies. That's right. the, the world can come to whatever it wants to come to. I'm going to be all right with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A famine can hit the day. I'm going to eat every day. Because I'm trusting the one who's able to give yeah, yeah, resources yeah, right. because he is. Yeah, right. He is an ultimate source. Oh, you're right. right. Yes, Lord. For the man's ways please the Lord. This Lord is the self-existing God. Mm -hmm. This Lord is Adonai. Mm -hmm. he, he is the one that existed before there was a win on where. Mm -hmm. This Lord, this Lord is Jehovah God. Yes. Yahweh, the true and the living God. And because he is the self-existing God, no one can tell God what to do. All right. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I'm so glad you're not God. Yeah. Aren't you glad I'm not God? Yes, sir. Because if you were God, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. And if I was God, you better bet you'd be in trouble. <laughs> Thank God that he is God, and he's the God of grace and the God of mercy. He's the self-existing God. He, he is an anonymous God. He, he's God all by himself. This Lord God, we ought to seek to please him. The word please means to be accepted by God, to, to have God's favor, to, be, to have God's approval. To, to be reconciled to God and to reconcile oneself to him. In other words, this word please means to satisfy. We can only satisfy God through our faith and our ways. And when we walk in faith, God is able to bless us to alter our ways because it doesn't make sense. You know it doesn't make sense if you sit here for an hour and a half, come to church for an hour and a half every Sunday. It doesn't make sense to the natural man. It doesn't make sense for you to think that the word of God will change your life. It, it doesn't make sense to think that you can read some stuff off the paper, get it in your head, let it drip into your heart, and it will make a difference in your life. It really doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But God has never made sense because God cannot talk like this. The first shall be last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We fight to become first. We try to push our way to become first. But God says the first shall be last. God says that the last shall be first. God has a way of maneuvering us and positioning us where we can become first. Isn't that awesome? Because he's God. He is the self-existing God. He is God himself. And, and when it comes to peace, this, this, this Hebrew word is shalom. When it comes to peace, God gives us not just quietness, but he gives us safety. God gives us a peace of mind. He, he gives us safety in our mind. He gives us prosperity. Mm -hmm. this, word, this word peace means that which is perfect. Yes. God will give perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on him. All right. All right. He gives right. us perfect peace. He gives us perfect peace. This word peace means to be awarded. God awards you when your ways please him. God awards you. God gives you a covenant with him. This word peace means to create a covenant with him, an agreement with him, to come in contact with him. And the only way that you can have an agreement with God is that you accept the fact that God is right and you are wrong. Yeah, All right. Yeah. You have to accept the fact, God, I messed up. God, I've fallen short. God, I'm not what I should be. God, please make me whole and give me peace. Yes, sir. When a person, when a person has peace, they can have rest. Yes, Amen. They can, they can move without anybody upsetting them. So you're right. I mean, I mean, some folk can get on your nerves. I mean, they can just really throw you off. I mean, you, you got one or two in your family. You got one or two in, 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 in your friend, your friendship. But but at the at the end of the day, you ought to have peace yeah, with yeah, the Lord. Right. The late Dr. Bill Graham would say that we ought to have, have wait, we ought to make peace with God. 
and as we, we make peace with God, then God is able to bless us to have peace within ourselves. Yeah. The reason why people don't have peace within themselves is because God has a vacuum in you. And that there's a hole in you. Every person that was born of a woman has a hole in them. That hole, that vacuum looks like God. That vacuum feels like God. That vacuum is shaped like God. And what, won't anything fill that hole but God? A new woman ain't going to do it. So you might as well keep the one you got. Right. A new man ain't going to fit. Right again. He just gonna give you trouble too. <laughs> a new car, a new house won't fit in that hole. See, we running around trying to get satisfaction. A new club ain't gonna do it. Great job. A new job won't fit the hole. Tell it, tell it. It looks like God. It's shaped like God. That hole in you is shaped like God. And you will never get satisfaction until you put God in first place. All right. Show you right. And when you put God in first place, then your ways please him. He gives you peace. You will never have peace until you put God in first place. Show you right. And when you put God in first place... Don't let folk fool you now that, that everything is going to be all right. No more troubles, no more crying. Some folk will justify in this room right now. I've been crying more now since I met the Lord than I ever have before. But it's always good when you got the Lord on board. When you have the Lord on board, he's able to, to dry your tears. He, he's able to make life better for you. He's able to give you a future and a hope when you got God on board. If it doesn't happen right now, that's all right, Lord. I know you're working behind the scenes and you're putting things together on my behalf. When you got God on board. Thank God I got God on board. In 1980, I put God on board. And I bowed my head in that room that day and invited Christ into my life. He yeah. came into my life, and he's been in my life ever since. And even through my up times and my down times, God is dead on board. And because God is on board, I am able to have his favor wherever I go. God gives us favor. God gives us hope. God gives us a happy end. He gives us peace. And he assured our peace over 2,000 years ago. Yes, he did. Over 2,000 years ago, God gave his very best, I tell you. Yes, he did. Over 2,000 years ago, uh, my Lord and your God yes, sir. took a tree, I tell you. He marched up Calvary's hill. Yeah. He died that day. Lord, yeah. Jesus the Christ took a cross and he marched up Calvary's hill. He, he died on a scum hill called Calvary. Yes, he did. They nailed him tight. They, they raised him high. They yeah. dropped him low. He died, I tell you. Yes, he did. They laid him in a bottle too.
sinner, you need to come to Jesus just as you are. Will you come? The door is open. And she sings. Will you please, like a river. All right. That's the one. Oh, tender. The door is open. The door is open. When so. Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We thank God for 